Hi everyone, this is Michael Jacobs, and it's really nice to see Club Kinetics starting to become a little more mainstream in discussion. That's great. That's why it's super important that we define exactly what the science of the golf swing is. And we did a really good job of that publishing the textbook Science of the Golf Swing. So I think it's important that although some of the things might seem complicated in there, that you take the time to study it. So what are we going to talk about today? Well, we're going to talk about the six kinetic drivers that a golfer has when they move a club. Now this is relatable to any type of rigid body when you're going to describe the physics of what happened from the external drivers that move the club. If it's in true 3D, six degrees of freedom, there's going to be six different drivers that can then be summed up into a resultant force, let's say, or a resultant torque or sum what we call it, but let's focus in on the individual parts. Now, why do we feel like the individual parts are important? There's a lot of golf talk where everybody just jumps up and down, uh, net force, net force, net force. Yeah, the sum of the forces is, is something that we take a look at, and it tells us a lot, but if we're gonna make adjustments as a golfer, we find it helpful to resolve it into each individual driver so we know where we're going to make the adjustments. It gives us much more information. So, so there would be, and you could follow this right in my Science of the Swing book, you could look at the Alpha, Beta, Gamma axes and have fun with that. Now, these are the six drivers, I wrote them up on the board, that we're going to be interested in. This is a local, to the club, moving coordinate system. Why does it have to be that way? Well, let's take a look at this, these two quotes from a textbook, and I think you'll understand why this type of frame is really the only way to do 3D rigid body dynamics in a reasonable manner. So now that we know that this reference frame has to be moving, if we're going to get the moments that we want to see to see how the golfer's speeding up and slowing the club down in all six degrees of freedom. Now, we have force alpha, force beta, and force gamma. So force alpha, force beta, force gamma. Please refer to the science of swing and don't, I'm not going to go into all the details. Now, the application of this force is not at the mass center, right? We're not holding the mass center when we're, when we're applying these three forces. So the three directions of force, because they're at a distance from a ma the mass center, create a levering action. So if I was gonna do a negative beta force in our convention, like I said, please refer to the science of the swing to follow along. If I'm gonna do a negative beta force in this direction, the mass center will accelerate this way, but because I'm at a distance from that mass center, there's also some bleed into angular. So if I held it at the mass center and pushed it in that negative beta direction, the club would just linearly respond. But because I'm holding it here, that linear motion also move, bleeds into a little bit of angular. So it doesn't linearly travel as far as when I hold it at the mass center because of some angular response. So these guys are responsible for the linear translations of the club and that angular response or that levering action. So when we're looking at things like work and power and all that, it's this area here that's taking care of um, some really important parts of the swing. So. On the other side, we have three torques, torque alpha, torque beta, and torque gamma. Now, if I did that negative beta force this way at the handle, and this club responds to that, this club is gonna want to rotate back as it linearly accelerates to the side. But I'm holding a golf club in my hands. I have a grip, I have use of my body to transmit through my grip and all that great stuff that we're going to tell you in Alpha Man when we work through the body. But 
Because of that, there's also a torque being applied. So let's say, for example, I do force the club like this, and the club does linearly accelerate this way, obviously, and doesn't rotate back as much. That means I'm applying a torque at this end to offset the different types of responses I'm getting from here. So that's what these are. So those are the six drivers. So we have alpha force, beta force, gamma force, alpha torque, beta torque, gamma torque. Everybody says, wow, that's so complicated. Well, that's what you have at your disposal. That's why golf is so difficult. So this club is moving all around and you're forcing and torquing, using your body, trying to get your body movements in, in the right spot. So as you'll see as we get into Alpha Man and beyond, you'll start to see that how the body works to make these more desirable will start to uh, balance out the body a lot. When you start to understand all six of these drivers and you put them together with sound body movements, the golfer gets more and more balanced. Uh, is, a, is a word I use when I'm working with my students. And if you're watching this, I think you, and you've worked with me, I think you know what that balance is all about. Now, the relationships of these do not change throughout the swing. As you remember from those quotes from the textbook, once we are ready to go and we have this set, we've selected our frame, throughout the course of the swing, Regardless of where this is, when I go like that, that's a negative beta force. That is force across the shaft. It doesn't matter if you do it here, or if you do it there, or if you do it in a strange spot. That is the action. Creates a moment, because we're not holding it at the mass center, and it's these here that are always in the same relationship to the mass center. You can't get around that. Now, it's been popular in uh, pseudo golf science to ignore that and to look at golf swings, let's say, from this perspective and treat this force when it's up here and this force when it's down here as something completely different. Here, it would lay the club down, so to speak, relative to some angle on the ground, which is really like a 2D representation. And then down here, it would be a completely different thing. That would be a handle push, and we don't want that. But you can't have this be one type of discussion, and then this be another. Uh, it doesn't work that way, and that's why the results will be a little goofy. So that's my suggestion to the discussion. So going forward, the only discussion that we're going to have is one where uh, all six drivers are relatable to uh, that action and the action that it makes is the same regardless of where it is in the swing. Alright, so the big discussion has been about beta force, so a negative beta force would be force across the shaft forward and a positive beta force would be force across the shaft this way and you can see that would create different responses so if I didn't do any torque like Dr. Steve uh, Dr. Nesbitt said in our uh, fundamentals video that's now available on YouTube, if you didn't apply any torque, you could still hit a ball pretty far. You would just force the club, it would angularly respond and linearly respond, and you could hit the ball. It might not be that accurate and such, but you can swing without these. But chances are you probably don't, especially with the way you're gripping it. And that Back to this beta force response and the alpha torque. So beta force creates alpha type response. You can see that this club is just yawing side to side. So when I do that on the back swing and I get up towards the top of the swing, if I'm putting a driver into the club, force beta, side to side on the club relative to its uh, moving coordinate system, if I do this and this, I am yawing the club. And a lot of people are calling this a laydown move or a shallowing move because it's a 2D type mentality out there, especially with um, you know taking pictures and videos. So we look at this, and you look at a golfer at the top of the swing, and let's say they do this, and you say, "Wow, look, he laid the club down. He shallowed it out." Well, all that is this direction is 
in this category. So that can't be um, changed. So I think everybody needs to change their thinking to understand that if you're going to make a move like this, let's say if I started my downswing and I applied, obviously you're applying some um, negative alpha force, you're also applying some negative gamma force as you start down, but if I apply a lot of negative beta and make what looks like in a 2D video, oh I'm laying the club down, you're, you're essentially in handle dragging or beta, negative beta forcing the club so much that you're going to have to do other things. And when you do that, you'll notice that the club face starts to change. So I think that's why it's popular nowadays to really arch the wrist to help with this area, which is a topic for another day, to help with that, to help square the face up when people are trying to do this massive negative and positive beta force. Now, there is a lot that goes into this. And there's a whole book that covers it, and then I'm gonna have two different videos. One is an introduction to this, and the other is more of like a higher end one, uh, like a more in depth, where we'll go into these and we'll mix and match and all that. So I'm not gonna get into too much of the detail, just to at least get you thinking in this direction. So now, one of the things that was up was uh, Matt Wolf's golf swing. So here's what I want you to think about. Based on the discussion that we just had, I'm not going to give you my opinion, but I want you to just take note of two things. On this early backswing move, where we see the club go this way, on the backswing, there's definitely positive alpha force to bring the club up, obviously. There's always negative gamma force because the club is curving, but there's positive beta force here, which starts to get that club to angular respond with that positive alpha response. And then as it comes up towards the top of the backswing, everybody calls this a lay down move. What you're going to notice is this comes back to a pretty traditional relationship of the alpha, beta, gamma axes and, and the handle. So, positive beta force, then changing to more of an even pull down, gamma force wise, and you're going to notice that this relationship, alpha rotation, the alpha torque part, and the beta force is evened out more. Yet everybody's calling that a supposed lay down in 2D, seeing the club go from here to there and saying, wow, look at how this thing is. You can describe it any way you want. You could draw pictures and describe anything. If there's ever fans of people coming up with their own descriptions, it's us at Jacobs 3D. But when it comes to the kinetic drivers of the swing, you cannot get around the fact that you have to, in 3D, that you have a moving coordinate system on the club unless you want to do a lot of back calculating in time and it's not gonna it's not gonna be pretty and you have six drivers that sum together for all different types of responses so the responses is what you see but to decode all those responses and find the answers to what the golfer is doing you have to sort through all these parts so I might have confused you in this video I might have uh, cleared some things up for you in this video. I might have made you more interested in looking in further, but What I want to drive home and we'll continue to put this out there I mean we're well into our body analysis. So pretty soon you're gonna see alpha beta and gamma of, of the body parts, but What I would what, what I would share and one of the valuable things that I learned from my time with Dr. Nesbitt putting this whole program together is there's six degrees of freedom. There's six drivers there. And if we could find each and every driver and then sum them all together, look at the responses, look at different pieces, moving pieces around, we can get to the answers that we want. It's common for everybody just to talk about a net, a, a sum of this and a sum of that. It's probably easier to figure out and calculate and all that. 
but we're interested in this. So if you want to learn more about this, you know where to go. Science at a Golf Swing, jacobs3d.com. Hope you enjoyed, and if there's any questions, have at it. We could talk about this stuff for years. Thanks.